So I hope, uh, can you all see, can you all already see my screen? Can I receive a signal, give a hand, some chat uh, to confirm that you have received it? Let me see, okay, fine. All right. Hello. Oh, there. Excuse me. Excuse me. Okay, everyone. Uh, let me just. Uh, sorry for just uh, a minor glitch uh, in the beginning. Okay, let me uh, welcome you again, everyone, to my webinar on managing financial adversity in business. Okay, uh, let me just um, um, reiterate or confirm on the topic of our discussion today, uh, managing financial adversity in business, surviving the long game. Okay, um, let me just show the laser here. Okay, some of you might, be, uh, might, might feel a little bit apprehensive, uh, you know, on what exactly you're gonna get from this session, yeah? So let me just be straight and open to you. By end of this session, you'll be able to understand on financial impact on COVID-19 as the topic of our presentation is uh, um, financial adversity. So I'll be specifically explaining, uh, explain to you on um, COVID-19 pandemic. So we are going to go into um, exactly what <coughs> this uh, issue is all about, impacting uh, all business uh, in all um, uh, impacting everyone. Okay, next, um, uh, in my discussions, I will help you to realize uh, the symptom and issue faced by businesses and to take necessary measures in managing financial adversity. Yeah. Uh, what most important is to understand the rule of the game and uh, finally, uh, you'll be able to find out on what it takes uh, to further enhance your understanding on the whole issue. Now, uh, let me just uh, um, introduce myself first. My name is Suhaini Kasmuri. So most people uh, call me SK. I'm a certified professional trainer and uh, I'm a senior partner of DT, Le DT, uh, DT Leadership Syndrome Brahat. Prior to this, I was the CFO of uh, an affiliate company called Acacia Communications in Denver Heart. Can I have a shout out uh, from Acacians in the house? Yes, yay. So, uh, sorry, you're muted, I guess. Uh, yes, okay, all right. And, uh, <laughs> hi, Katie. Okay, um, before joining Acacia, I was the CFO of uh, Satri Company of Telecom Malaysia, a company called Fiberil Sinan Bahad. Hi, Fiberilian. Okay, right. Um, let me just uh, share with you on um, what this detailed leadership is all about. We are basically uh, an HRDF certified company. So we have started our um, uh, operations way back in 2014. And basically, the company is founded by uh, none other than a fine gentleman who introduced uh, in the beginning of the session just now, uh, Mr. Kairul Anwar. Say hi to Kairul Anwar. Yes. Uh, so I knew him when I took uh, MBA, and uh, he also my mentor in my journey to become a professional trainer and coach, a business coach. So we are specialized in basically providing training and coaching uh, for leadership development, uh, focusing on design thinking as a human-centered tool for innovation and strategy. Okay, just to share with you some of our recent track record. Uh, so we have um, worked with uh, some known brands and company. Uh, so as you can see here, 
There are some of our clients here. And uh, just to share with you, uh, uh, effective um, um, from implementation of MCO or uh, PKP in um, March, so we have um, adapted quickly by changing the way in which we conducted our training, whereby uh, one of our clients, uh, which is uh, Nestle, yeah. So in April, what we did was we have conducted full online remote uh, learning. Uh, that is an in-house training program that we conducted with uh, Nestle uh, on design thinking. So which basically uh, involving uh, you know some of their staff located at all over uh, state of Malaysia uh, using um, Microsoft Teams as a platform. So as a company, we are open to work on multiple platforms to provide our training on remote or online training. And uh, we are open to work on um, perhaps uh, Cisco WebEx or um, the Zoom, yeah? And many others depending on customer preference or, or requirement. Okay, uh, for you, if you need to know um, more about uh, detail leadership and what are the programs that we have in store, you may visit our uh, website here at uh, uh, www.detailleadership.my. Now, okay, let me just uh, continue on uh, to begin with um, uh, the topic on managing financial adversity in business. The case in point here that I would like to uh, highlight as uh, you know, my uh, early introductions earlier is on the issue of COVID-19 pandemic. Now, uh, let me just give, me, uh, give you all an overview about the background of uh, this case in point. Yeah? Um, coronavirus or COVID-19 pandemic, uh, it is without a doubt uh, an issue that has taken many people by su total surprise with the way in which things and uh, has been unfolding thus far yeah and um, from here uh, a lot of uh, business um, it has affected global market and with that uh, a lot of uh, uh, business sector has been uh, adversely affected by it and we've seen that uh, many companies are struggling to keep up with their uh, monthly expenditure as most of them, ever since the implementation of PKP, in particular in Malaysia, uh, starting from 18 March, 2020, uh, they are forced to close down okay, due to uh, PKP or MCO. And with that, a lot of organizations will need to um, uh, look back uh, on, uh, need to scale back on their operations uh, to, to keep the business moving. And inevitably, a layoff uh, is imminent. So as we speak right now, there's a lot of companies, uh, you know, particularly on uh, SME, has been laying off uh, some of their workforce. And reason being is basically uh, due to a tight liquidity that has, uh, that has been uh, experienced by a lot of organizations, uh, mainly this, this due to significant drop in sales, um, and earnings and free cash flow, yeah. And as a result, a lot of people uh, has been adversely impacted. Uh, you know, a lot of people are struggling to make their end meet. Okay, I don't have uh, the picture of Chik Gaya eh, as uh, the POV persona to represent, you know, uh, people on the road uh, uh, issue. So basically, um, maybe I would say this is, could be uh, Chik Farid, uh, he's, uh, so he's representing a lot of people out there who's actually struggling to make their end meet. And uh, as a business, we need to actually really um, consider and analyze, you know, the domino effect of uh, this pandemic. As uh, we all know that this doesn't happen in Malaysia, but all across the globe. And the last thing is that what's worrying is that... Uh, a potential impact to the bottom chain of supply chain, which is household. And when household is uh, impacted, so it's definitely not going to be good for uh, companies as uh, it will affect uh, in terms of uh, consumption and spending uh, of household. And uh, this is uh, going to affect business uh, overall uh, in um, uh, times to come. 
Now, uh, let's take a look at you know, how this uh, reflected as far as the economic indicator is concerned. So I would like to share with you on the recent statistic. Yeah? Uh, this was published by the Department of Statistics of Malaysia, so which um, state that um, basically the um, Malaysia economy grew marginally at 0.7% in Q1 2020. And historically, this has been the lowest growth recorded since Q3 2009. Yeah? And if you take a look at quarter to quarter, uh, the performance, uh, the GDP performance has shown a rather big drop from 3.6% uh, in Q4 2019 to only 0.7% in Q1 2020. And if you looked at uh, the figure, it's basically attributable to the domestic production. And if you zoom in in particular on the service sector, which contributed the largest of uh, domestic production, um, which attribute, uh, attributed 58.4%, uh, has been experiencing a negative, uh, rather um, a drop in, in growth from 6.2% in Q4 2019 to 3.1%. All right. Now, uh, let's take a look at uh, unemployment rate. Okay. In March 2020 alone, it's increased to uh, an alarming rate of 3.9%. And that, this has been the highest over the last 12 months. Yeah. And in terms of Bank Negara Malaysia projected uh, projections for Malaysia GDP, so it's going to shrink to between 0.5 and negative 2% in 2020. Now, uh, let's take a look at, uh, you know, the, those are sectors, uh, what are the sectors that are actually impacted uh, adversely by this COVID-19 pandemic. Yeah. Uh, from here, uh, we can look at um, uh, the way how sectors, uh, you know, got being impacted in terms of short-term liquidity. Yeah. For those who are not aware in terms of liquidity is uh, meaning, you know, how quickly can your company uh, convert uh, assets into cash? And uh, why exists here represent challenges in terms of uh, profitability, particularly in year 2020. So if you look at the bottom, uh, um, what I mean is if you look at uh, top uh, right corner of the quadrant, so we can see uh, airline sector or services um, been highly hit, as well as tourism and travel, as people are not traveling anymore. And we can also see that in terms of uh, retail, excluding fast moving consumer good, also been really badly affected. Now, uh, for those um, other sectors, uh, we can have a look at uh, down below uh, in terms of uh, automotive. Yeah? <clears throat> automotive uh, has experienced um, uh, rather um, uh, issue on liquidity in, in terms of short-term liquidity due to a drop in car sales as people are not able to uh, travel even domestically so it has re uh, uh, re um, resulted in reductions of a number of car sales. And when production has uh, gone, um, uh, has dropped significantly, it also affected uh, logistics. As for oil and gas, I think um, everyone is fully aware um, that uh, it has been going through some seasonal cyc cyclical uh, volatility. And to make the matter worse, uh, by end of Q1 2020, uh, oil and gas sector has uh, experienced uh, rather um, a, a drop in terms of uh, oil price, which hovering around 30 US dollar per barrel. Uh, but thanks God, it's uh, slowly catching up and uh, you know going uh, up back again. Uh, but uh, recently, uh, it's uh, reaching close to 40 US dollar per barrel. But then, uh, it's still lower than the Malaysian government projections of using um, the price uh, basis uh, with, uh, of 60 to 65 US dollar per barrel. So this is basically due to um, uh, pressure, uh, price war between Saudi Arabia, uh, Saudi Arabia and Russia that has uh, 
um, cost pressure on its demand and supply. Now, let's take a look at uh, those sectors that actually rather insulated by uh, this pandemic, uh, COVID-19. Uh, the first sector is that pharmaceutical and health services, which basically, uh, as people are becoming more aware, uh, becoming more concerned about their health in order to combat the virus, uh, that uh, it has um, experienced rather a steady growth. And uh, we also can see in terms of um, e-commerce, uh, due to a major shift in demand from a traditional uh, retail, uh, where people are resorting to purchasing online. So we've seen uh, there has been a sudden growth in uh, online um, e-commerce platform, the likes of uh, Lazada, Shopee, Amazon.com and all that. And we have also seen that there's a shift in um, people buying uh, FMB um, instead of uh, going for traditional FMB. So people um, uh, shift to uh, purchasing food delivery online. Tech-based company also, it is a boon um, in, in terms of it poised very well to combat uh, the, uh, to, to weather the uh, hostile environment of COVID-19 as a lot of people uh, and activities is centered around work from home uh, activities, from, from work from home economy. So we can see that uh, there's a, a, a real uh, strong growth in companies like uh, Cisco Webex, uh, Zoom, uh, Microsoft, and uh, uh, content providers uh, who's uh, providing gaming, Netflix, and all this. Due to when people uh, being uh, locked down in the house uh, due to MCO. And finally, in terms of uh, financial sector, yeah, uh, due to monetary control, uh, where uh, government of Malaysia imposing reductions of interest rate. Uh, so it's not going to impact that much in terms of short-term liquidity, but uh, it will basically uh, um, uh, provide a real great challenge in, as far as profitability is concerned towards second half of the year uh, as um, earn, uh, there's a potential reduction of, uh, of earnings uh, because of lower interest rates. And uh, potentially, there could be a lot more companies that uh, uh, could be in uh, problem or trouble, and that could potentially also uh, end, uh, having uh, an issue in terms of NPL or non-performing loans. Okay, that is basically uh, in terms of sectors that uh, rather sector of economy that badly affected by this uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Now, uh, let's take a look at uh, what are the symptoms uh, a business may face uh, due to this crisis. Number one is uh, downward trend in sales, earning, and free cash flow. Yeah, sales, earning, and free cash flow. <clears throat> uh, I think this is the second time yeah, I mentioned about free cash flow. Eh? Uh, I hope uh, everyone of you really clear what does free cash flow mean. Eh? Uh, let me just uh, uh, explain it to you what this uh, free cash flow means. Assuming that you have uh, 10 ringgit in your pocket, okay, it is a free cash to you if you uh, can freely use it for whatever uh, purpose that you want. You can spend it, you can buy whatever you want. But the thing is, if that $10 uh, in your pocket is already earmarked for you to say, pay up uh, amount owing to your friends, so meaning it is... Uh, a non-free cash flow. So that, uh, in the context of organization, uh, what it means by uh, free cash flow. Now, next would be uh, in terms of tight cash flow and uh, working capital. As um, uh, due to extremely poor, um, uh, extremely poor uh, trading condition uh, during uh, the crisis, a company has been experience, uh, experiencing a very tight cash flow. Uh, and liquidity, and that uh, really causes strain to cash flow and working capital. Now, um, number three is increased inventories leading to higher costs. Uh, as sales going down, inventories is building up. 
So that will lead to a higher cost in terms of storage and uh, obsolete items. Number four uh, is in terms of uh, creditors building up, exposing higher risk of non-payment. And that followed by default notices for non-payment of loan, uh, for rents, leases, and etc. And when this thing happened, a lot of companies need to deal with a lot of administrative issue on issue of uh, bad loans uh, and uh, non-payment issue. And worse still, in uh, worst case scenarios, that uh, breaches in banking covenant. Uh, so there are some organizations who, who basically um, affected badly in terms of their, their cash flow position that uh, some of them uh, might be um, unable to meet their financing, uh, schedule financing banking obligations. Yeah. Right. Uh, let's take a look at uh, you know, some of the potential issues that may lead to financial adversity, right? I uh, already explained to you earlier about some of the symptoms which basically revolves around liquidity issue and cash flow position. Now let's take a look at some of the potential issue that might lead uh, to uh, financial adversity. Number one is deteriorations of customer relationship management. Okay, then this uh, would uh, result in higher risk of bad debt. Yeah. Next one would be increase in supply chain uh, due to uh, pressure in demand and supply. And uh, next one would be continued deterioration's of performance. Now, some company uh, is going to uh, uh, really, um, um, it's uh, some company will, will be uh, experiencing uh, some con uh, continuous uh, de deterioration and performance even after uh, the, uh, the crisis is over, if uh, there's no uh, proper financial uh, planning uh, being put in place. Uh, number four is in terms of early and rapid impairment of assets. Yeah, uh, I mentioned to you earlier, a lot of company will be experiencing um, lower in terms of uh, uh, shortfall in sales. And what happened is that uh, when um, um, sale is lower, then uh, the asset of the company will be very much underutilized. So it's not able to generate uh, optimum level of reductions as it intended for. And as a result, some company might end up having to impair some of their asset. And this is going to have a real major impact to their bottom line. Next would be uh, business failure or business default to some organization yeah due to continuously weak performance uh, in months to come or even after uh, you know the crisis is over and um, unavoidably um, some company might end up uh, into having um, confronting an issue of insolvency and bankruptcy now, how to manage them, uh, how to manage all these problems, how to manage them, yeah? Uh, the key solution to the problem in short term and long term is, yeah, effective management of cash and working capital. Now, I believe every one of you uh, really, uh, you know, have heard about this tagline, cash is king, yeah? Now, uh, why cash is king, even more so during times of crisis? Okay, let's try to understand this. One of the uh, reasons is that uh, asset, uh, sorry, cash is one of the most important component of current assets. Yeah. And secondly, it is the most liquid asset. What does it mean is that, you know, when company have a lot of cash, company could uh, do whatever it can, whatever it deems necessary to ensure business continuity, right? And uh, in times of crisis, liquidity is really critical due to extremely poor um, trading conditions that, uh, you know, uh, experienced by uh, all company, you know, the whole um, uh, the economy will be impacted. 
Now, uh, if you ask me, what is the main reason uh, for holding cash? Uh, so there are three main reasons. Number one is a transaction motive. Yeah. So here, company need to have adequate cash in order to uh, prepare for a routine payment, like uh, payment of salary, uh, rental, and payment of operating expenses. Yeah. Uh, second reason is for precautionary motive. Company need to anticipate for unexpected demand for cash, uh, such as uh, such as uh, uh, extra payment needed for purchases due to increase in uh, material prices due to pressure in demand and supply. And thirdly, the third reason is for speculative motive. Here, what does it mean is that company need to at all time have adequate cash in order to. Um, uh, take advantage of market condition, such as, um, for instance, uh, purchasing uh, in excess of quantity of materials uh, in return for huge discount, for instance, or um, uh, alternatively, uh, alternatively, in during time of crisis, a lot of uh, organizations are offering cash discount in return for early and um, a full uh, settlement of uh, debts by vendors. Okay, here, uh, uh, the importance of cash. Cash is really, really important because uh, to avoid company having to uh, have an issue in terms of liquidity. Now, uh, I explained to you uh, is about effective uh, working capital management or cash management. Now, let's try to understand what does uh, working capital management means, yeah? So basically, uh, capital management refers to working capital management. Yeah, refers to techniques and um, it's basically a refer to techniques and um, uh, ways on how uh, uh, being designed to control all the items of current assets and current liabilities uh, in order to ensure effective and efficient use of uh, all these uh, component of assets, uh, current assets and current liabilities. And uh, when we talk about a working capital, it consists of four main items, right? Mm, I try to use the pen here, but it's not working. Um, I'm sorry because uh, this is open, you know, when uh, there's always a glitch, uh, you know, when we conduct uh, this uh, live uh, training like this. Okay, never mind. Okay, the, um, come again into, um, on working capital, yeah? Working capital consists of one, uh, four main items, which is number one here, cash, uh, receivable, account receivable. Uh, number three is account payables. And number four, inventory management. Now, let's just focus on uh, one of the most important aspect of working capital, which is cash management. Yeah? Okay, here, what company need to do is to focus on uh, cash to cash conversion of uh, these three main component. So what is mean here? Effective cash management is um, making sure that account receivable here are collected, uh, you know, fast enough in order for company to pay the accounts payable and also to finance inventory management. Yeah, and in terms of account receivable, um, early and effective. Uh, engagement with customer is really, really important in order to improve um, uh, collection and reducing um, ARDs. Uh, and for accounts payable, here companies, what company can do is to develop strategy to, um, for instance, prioritize key uh, critical vendors, number one, yeah, that's number one. And number two, uh, perhaps um, to renegotiate terms of supply chain, right? And the last one is in terms of uh, inventory management. Here, what company can do is to realign on strategies, uh, perhaps uh, to adopt just-in-time inventory management based, based on push and pull approach in order to avoid uh, bottlenecks in production at the same time, avoiding uh, excess of inventory. Perhaps companies need to also uh, look into uh, maybe adopting consignment, uh, purchasing on consignment. Yeah. Now, 
uh, working capital management is very much finance focused. Okay, that uh, company need to address in managing uh, adversity during crisis. Now let's take a look at um, you know uh, what are operational measures that uh, can be taken by organisations. So I would say this is very much more on non-finance focus. Yeah. Number one is boost companies' cash inflow. So here. Uh, during times of crisis, uh, it's no longer about meeting sales target, right? And uh, the focus and attention of the organization should be more on uh, boosting the cash flow position. So company need to adopt. So in this case, uh, uh, cash optimization outweighs uh, profit optimizations. I believe um, uh, all of you are clear about the difference between uh, profit and cash, right? Okay, let me just explain to you guys, uh, you know, uh, the difference uh, between uh, profit and cash. So what I mean is that profit is recognized uh, when sales is made, whereas uh, unfortunately, sales is recognized when uh, the goods is shipped out or when the service is rendered, regardless whether the cash can, uh, is collected or not. So in this case, boosting a uh, company's cash flow is really, really important during times of uh, crisis. Next one would be uh, look at areas for business improvement. Okay, there, there should be uh, non, none other better time uh, apart from during crisis uh, for companies to actually really uh, make, uh, take a reflection uh, to look at areas for business improvement. So here what company can do is that uh, to look at value innovation and some strategic change in terms uh, of uh, addressing number one, uh, there are three, uh, three uh, objective, yeah? number one, uh, increase revenue, and number two, uh, to reduce costs, and number three, to improve uh, processes. Now, um, the next one will be empowerment of budget control, right? Uh, in managing financial adversity, uh, adversity, it doesn't only require participation and commitment from only uh, finance team or finance department in the organization, but it involves uh, you know, all the other department uh, to uh, play um, an active role in making sure a company is able to sail through uh, the adversity. Right? Uh, when I'm talking about uh, empowerment of budget control, so now the budget holder or you know, uh, departments other than finance department uh, will need to reassess back, uh, you know, um, be sensitive enough uh, to uh, spending of the budget, yeah? And the initiative uh, or proposal should come from uh, the budget owner themselves, perhaps to reprioritize or perhaps need to pull back some of non-critical uh, purchases to the organization, yeah? Next would be on alternate revenue stream, okay? So in this case is that, um, uh, company need to consider ways in which uh, revenue can be temporarily or permanently replaced with uh, new revenue or alternative revenue. Company need to uh, think on perhaps come up with a non-traditional revenue stream in order to cushion the reductions of sales. So in here, uh, what company can do is that, uh, you know, perhaps expanding into adjacent market or adjacent product. So what does it mean is uh, selling uh, existing product to different customers via a different channel. Uh, alternatively, uh, perhaps, uh, you know, selling new product to the existing customer. Okay, um, from uh, this uh, COVID-19 pandemic, uh, you know, um, the uh, classic case uh, example we can see is shift in demand on in terms of non-traditional FMB, when people, you know, buying uh, online uh, food delivery online. So company need to look into this, uh, you know, uh, adjacent market or adjacent product. Number five is uh, swap fixed costs for variable costs. Now, assuming um, the uh, fixed cost of the company, you know, constitute a large uh, portion of the total cost. So in terms of crisis, when uh, activities is rather low, 
uh, companies still need to absorb, you know, uh, almost the same amount of co uh, uh, cost. But the thing is, if a uh, company is able to convert all these fixed costs into variable costs, and when uh, the, the activities is, uh, you know, uh, going down, so companies will uh, only um, end up, uh, you know, having a lower than uh, a normal uh, cost to be absorbed. And uh, another one is uh, develop robust framework for managing supply chain. Okay. And here, um, basically, a company need to actually review and try to understand financial risks of their key uh, strategic vendors in order to avoid any kind of potential disruptions in production. Yeah. Okay, uh, this uh, basically, you know, uh, just uh, among uh, some of the operational measures that, uh, you know, company can take and it's very much on finance focus, non-finance focus. And let's take a look at, uh, you know, in terms of um, strategic measures. Okay, when talk about strategic measures, uh, it's uh, very much, um, you know, required involvement from top management and is very much holistic uh, approach in nature. Right. Number one is uh, develop, uh, forecast be, uh, for, develop forecast based on scenario setting or testing. Yeah. Uh, here, uh, I guess uh, a lot of you are familiar with uh, the statement um, that uh, businesses uh, do not uh, plan to fail, but uh, more often than not, they uh, they fail to, yeah, they, they, yes, they, uh, my answer would be they, plain, they sorry, they, they fail to forecast, yeah, uh, meaning uh, in this case, a company would need to construct a performer financial statement as many as possible uh, based on scenario setting, you know, what if analysis and all that. Um, based on certain threshold and uh, trigger points, yeah, and uh, I guess uh, you know you know what kind of uh, business variable that you are dealing with. So please, you know, uh, do your forecast uh, as many as possible to look at you know whatever possible scenario, scenario in order to uh, make uh, informed decision or effective decisions. Um, secondly, is a review capital expenditure and new inv uh, new investment. Now, uh, when talk about uh, times of crisis, uh, it, you know capital expenditure is important to ensure long term growth of the company. Yeah, uh, but then during times of crisis, it is time for company to reassess back uh, its capital expenditure and to see or the, whether or not you know some. The capital expenditure can be reprioritized, or perhaps uh, you know to pull back some uh, new investment in order to uh, maintain liquidity of the company. Uh, next one, we uh, recalibrate uh, business model and work culture. So here, uh, some of the activity that company can do perhaps uh, is looking at uh, you know modifications of budgets. Yeah and perhaps uh, making change on adoptions of uh, some uh, financial strategy, perhaps uh, adopting a uh, cash preservation strategy and uh, looking at cost cutting or cost saving measures and uh, uh, for finance uh, teams particularly, it's pivotal for them to look at, uh, you know, uh, what are the potential uh, payments that can be deferred or, you know, making some uh, staggered payment, yeah. Next one would be on identify high risk area and develop new strategy. So this might need uh, to take, uh, you know, some uh, deep reflections in terms of uh, company strategy and uh, company need to really uh, perhaps uh, think of, uh, you know, change the, the, the whole game in making sure that uh, you know companies are uh, able to move on yeah and uh, uh, here uh, obviously um, for instance company could uh, continue on embarking or harnessing on digital digitalization yeah and talent management is critical to ensure business continuity 
And finally, is to uh, focus on stakeholder engagement by adopting open and transparent communication. Okay, here, uh, what it means is that, uh, you know, company really need to um, be engaged uh, to uh, keep a constant engagement with stakeholders like uh, workforce, board of directors, shareholders, uh, to make sure that, uh, you know, open and transparent communication takes place. And um, uh, companies also need to ensure that, uh, you know, to address uh, some of the concern or expectations of these stakeholders so that uh, you will be able to maintain will and good uh, trust and goodwill. Now, um, what are the key takeaway points, uh, you know, um, that uh, I would like to uh, come across here is for every one of you is that crisis and financial adversity are opportunity for business improvement and it is a test of company's ability to be agile. Yeah. And rule of the game is yes, know your numbers. Yeah. And uh, when I'm uh, uh, telling you uh, know your numbers, what does it mean is that, uh, you know, uh, when we talk about numbers, it should not be confined or should be uh, strictly uh, under the domain of financial professional or financial people in your organizations. Knowing numbers is that uh, how you need to, uh, you can do it is in is uh, to make sure that uh, you know all of you at least to have uh, some basic understanding of uh, accounting and certain level of financial literacy. And only that, yeah, and only that you'll be able to read and make sense of numbers uh, in the financial statement and be really clear on business facts of uh, financial circumstances in order to be able to make a more effective and informed business decision. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I guess uh, that is basically, you know, uh, my sharing, but uh, you know, I would like to before, um, maybe if I got time to take, uh, you know, some of the questions from some of you, uh, I would like to just, um, you know, uh, promote uh, to you uh, in trying to master the number games, yeah? I'll be conducting a public program, okay? This is uh, basically uh, based on a virtual um, training. So I'll be conducting on 14 and 15 of July. It is going to be a two days course. So it's going to be a full, uh, so you can, um, so it's very, it's, it's basically focusing on uh, non-finance people and is, uh, is um, um, targeted uh, on executive and managers. Uh, on how, the topic is how to master the number games in business. Yeah. Um, so I will um, short, uh, maybe after the webinar session here, so I'll be sending you a mailer in your email and uh, perhaps you can also check on our website uh, to uh, keep tabs on, you know, uh, this program. And also, apart from that, uh, you know, some other programs that uh, probably might be of interest to you. Okay, uh, in data leadership, uh, we have um, uh, some programs that uh, we are conducted live um, and also uh, on a remote uh, train, uh, learning environment. So be it uh, live training or it can be uh, some pace training or hybrid combinations of um, um, pace training and live training and a full 100% uh, virtual training. So you may check on our website and have a look into you know, some of the training that uh, could be of your interest. And uh, let me just um, take a look at, uh, so with that, I, uh, that is some of my um, key uh, takeaway points uh, and message to all of you guys. Uh, uh, let me just check whether, you know, if there's any questions from any one of you. Yeah. All right, okay, thanks so much uh, yeah. for presentation. Right, right, so we can take some question now. Any questions for SK? Any thoughts? 
So uh, this webinar, while waiting for some questions, uh, the webinar is one of our webinar series uh, on a few topics uh, on innovation, change, and also uh, entrepreneurship. Right? We we had some time we have live webinar like this. On other times we have a recorded webinar. You can also go to our the recent one we had was with um, on employee experience. Let me just share you a little bit on employee experience. This is from Grab. Uh, Grab retrenched some people, as you know, but uh, a lot of people do not know that Grab did a lot of other things as well on the employee experience. You know, I did a webinar on this. You can go to our YouTube and have a look at the webinar. Just Google, sorry, just YouTube, DT Leadership. You'll be able to see this webinar in full. And this is upcoming one, uh, designing, how do you design employee experience? Uh, our webinar is a bit short, 30 for, to 40 minutes only, to 45 minutes. Uh, this is on employee experience, how to use, uh, do you use a behavioral model to design uh, something great on employee experience? Like what SK is saying just now, no? because of the pandemic, COVID, I think we all know this, uh, the impact on employee experience is very much. Employee does not mean only the staff, even with the bosses, the demand from the customer. So how do you do that? If you were to let go some people, how do you do do it graciously or with class? Uh, so these are the things that we cover and how can you use a model to help you design a better experience? And also another one is the Alpha Innovation Team. This is on innovation. Uh, this one will be next week. Uh, I can check again my calendar. It should be next week. How do you build an innovation team? We're talking about corporate culture is dead. Uh, build innovation culture instead, right? So we do regularly on webinar. I know that sometimes we send you some mail. Uh, just bear with us. If you do not wish to receive any other more mail, just let us know. Uh, silent is golden. So if you keep quiet, we think that you want to us to send more information about this. All right. <laughs> okay. So yeah. Any any questions um, before we end the session? Over on your side, SK, you want to add anything else on this? Uh, you hear me? Yes, well. Yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. Uh, I guess uh, that's about it. Uh, you know, I hope, uh, you know, uh, all of you can actually really check that, uh, you know, what are the programs outlined, you know, that could, uh, you know, could be of interest to you. And uh, uh, as I uh, was discussing on the issue of financial adversity, and the main uh, important uh, aspect is that, uh, you know, uh, should know your numbers. And, uh, you know, uh, if any one of you interested uh, to join for my program, you can do so. And as I mentioned to you, we'll be sending you a mailer to give you a little more, de more details about it. So uh, I thank you again so much. You know, I think uh, we have... Uh, have quite a number of, uh, you know, uh, rather big team from uh, Acacia, all Acacians. Yeah. Yes. Say hi. And Say hi. <laughs> thank you yeah. so much. Yeah. And Fiberillion as well. Yeah. Thank right. you so much. I really appreciate for your time. Right. Okay. Uh, thank you so much. All right. With that, thank you. Have a safe day. Stay safe. Have a good week. Bye bye. See you again. Keep all in right. touch. Okay. All bye, right. everyone.